Hi there, folks. Today we're looking at areas of circles and sectors. And so first of all, let's talk about the area of a circle. If you recall, the area of a circle is area equals pi r squared. That's our formula for the area of the entire circle. And then a sector is basically like a small region of the circle, almost like a pizza slice out of this whole thing. All right, or uh, a slice of pie, pun intended, uh, as it were. Okay, and so a sector is a region of the circle bound by an arc and two radii uh, to the arc's endpoints. And really, that's just a fancy way of saying, hey, it's a piece of the circle. Okay, and it's a piece in the structure of something like a piece of pizza or a piece of pie, something like that. And so, yeah, in technical terms, yeah, if we're looking at this thing in terms of like an arc. So the endpoints of the arc and two radii, there it is. There's your sector, okay? And so, again, when you look at the technical definition, all right, that's, there's a lot going on there. But if you just think of it like a slice of pizza or of a piece of pie, that's what a sector really is, okay? And so when we're talking about the area of a sector, it's basically a partial measurement of the area of the whole circle. So very much like we did uh, when we found arc lengths, all right, sector areas are pretty much the same thing. It's a portion of the entire area. So we can set it up using proportions, or we can think of it as a fraction of the whole area and just multiply the area by the fraction that we need, okay? And so uh, looking at something like uh, uh, the area, once again, this is the same thing that we kind of saw when we were looking at the, uh, uh, the length of an arc, um, but it's the same principle, the ratio of the sector area to the area of the entire circle uh, is the ratio of its corresponding central angle to 360. And that is literally the same thing that we had with arc length, except instead of, uh, you know, sector area and area of the whole circle, it was arc length and circumference of the whole circle. All right. So really, this is the same thing, but applied to area. And it's even the same ratio that we start with. We're look, comparing the ratio of the angles, all right? So the ratio of the angle we have over the entire uh, circle, which is 360, is going to be the same as the ratio of the sector area over the entire area, okay? And so once again, this means, just like it did with arc length, that we can find the sector area by setting up a proportion, or we can multiply the area by the angle ratio. And once again, that is literally the same thing we did with our arc length, okay? So I can either say, hey, you know what? This is a fraction of the whole area, so I take the whole area times the fraction I need. Or I can say, hey, this area, all right, compared to the whole area is the same as the partial angle compared to the whole angle. So I can set it up as a proportion, or I can multiply by a fraction, okay? Uh, for example, look at these guys. I want to find the sector area. The sector is the thing that's kind of uh, uh, colored in in green there. It's kind of shaded. And so as I look at this thing, once again, there are two ways that I can do this. I can either think of it in terms of a fraction, say that's a fraction of the whole thing. And so for this one, I look at it and say, okay, well, the entire area, I start with that. If I look at this thing from the perspective of the entire area, remember area is pi r squared. Over this one, that would be this. So the entire area is 25 pi. So that's the area of the entire thing, but I only want the, the area of that small section, which means I only want a fraction of the overall area, and the fraction that I need is still the same as what I get when I look at the fraction of the angle compared to the whole thing. And so for this one, if I look at this angle at 72 degrees, well, that's 72 out of the 360. Well, that's the fraction of the entire circle that I'm talking about. And so if I want to find the area of that sector, I just take the entire area times the fraction that I want. Okay, so I want 72 out of 36. That's the fraction of the whole area I want. And now I can find this thing. Okay, and so once again, this becomes a job for my calculator. Again, if we wanted the exact measurement, we would just multiply the, the 72 uh, times the 25 and then reduce it with the 360 and then just leave it in terms of pi. If we want the uh, rounded off answer, we just plug it right into our calculators. And if you uh, want to here, like uh, you can uh, reduce these individually. I guess I should do the exact version first. I would reduce these individually first. They're each divisible by 36. 
Um, so that is a 2 and a 10. Actually, I could have gone more to the reach divisible by 72. So this reduces to a 1 fifth right here. And then times the 25 is just a 5. So really, the area here is 5 pi. And that's square centimeters. And yes, sometimes we might want to leave it in terms of exact values if we're going to use that then for something else. But again, for our purposes here, we just plug this into the calculator, 5 pi. So it's 15.71. And again, that's square centimeters. Okay. I can do the same thing, but setting up uh, uh, proportions here. And if I were to set up a proportion for this, when I start the same way, I say, hey, you know what? The proportion, the ratio for the angles, so 72 compared to the 360, the partial compared to the whole, so part over the whole, equals part over the whole, the partial area, which is the thing I don't know, over the whole area, which is 25 pi. And now, once again, I can cross multiply. Uh, this one, I, I got to do the 72 times the 25 so I get 1,800. And now I divide each side by the 360. And so once again, right here, divided by 360, that gives me the 5, just like it did before. So that's 5 pi. And then once again, I can plug it into the calculator and get the 15.71, OK? But again, it's a partial measurement of the entire area. So I either say, hey, it's a fraction of the whole area, multiply by the fraction, or it's proportional to the whole area. So I do part over the whole in terms of the angles equals part over the whole in terms of the areas. Okay. If I look at the next one, once again, uh, I want the sector area here. And be careful, uh, when we look at the angle that's given the 30 degrees, that is not the angle that represents the shaded area. The angle that represents the shaded area would be 150 degrees for this whole thing if I mark the arc on the outside here, okay? And again, that's because this whole thing, just using a little bit of arc addition uh, here, this is 30 degrees. The whole way to that uh, semicircle would be 180. So the portion I'm looking at is the 150, okay? So in terms of a fraction, this is represented by the fraction 150 over 360, Okay? So that's the fraction I'm looking at. And again, I want a fraction of the entire uh, area here. So once again, if I do fractions, area equals the fraction of the entire area. The area this time, once again, pi r squared. Uh, just be careful here. The, the r value is not actually given. The radius of this one is a 6 because the, the diameter is 12. Okay. And so that gives me a 36 uh, pi. And again, I can start reducing this thing. I'm going to actually cross-reduce first here, the 36 and the 360, uh, reduce to a 1 and a 10. And now I can reduce the 150 and the 10 to a 15 over 1. And so again, just doing a little quick mental math, if I want the exact value of this thing, and you can use your calculator to help you out on this, it's going to be 15 pi. All right. But again, I probably want the rounded off answer. So that's a job for my calculator. So 47.12. And that's square feet. OK. Option number two, once again, if you prefer setting this up in terms of proportions, that's OK. You just say the, the first ratio is the fraction. And that ratio equals the ratio that I'm going to get when I compare the areas of this thing. So the area of the small piece over the area of the whole thing, which once again was 36 pi. Okay? And once again, you cross multiply. I'm not going to show all of that, but you should get the same answer. You get the area equals 15 pi. And again, that's square feet. And if you want the exact area, that's how you leave it. If not, you plug it into your calculator and you get the 47.12. Okay? If I look at this guy, it says find the sector area if the radius of a circle is 6 inches and the corresponding center angle is 90 degrees. And so if you need to draw a picture on this, that's fine. Just draw a quick sketch of this thing. And so here it tells me that the radius is 6 inches. And that allows me to find the area of the entire circle at 36 pi. And then it says the angle that I'm talking about this time is this guy is a 90 degree angle. 
And so now I want to find this sector area. I want to find the area of that piece. And so once again, it's a fraction of the whole thing. The fraction that's represented here is 90 over 360. And you can always reduce those fractions ahead of time. I haven't really been doing that. But you can reduce that fraction and say, okay, that's one-fourth, okay? And really, that's an obvious one, especially when we're talking about circles at 90 degrees. It's a quarter of the circle. And so I only want a quarter of the area. And so the area of my sector this time is going to be, well, let me draw the one-fourth first, one-fourth of the area. And so that's going to be 9 pi. And again, if I want a, a decimal approximation here, I punch it in my calculator, okay? 28.27. And this was square inches. Okay, so here's the exact value. Here's the uh, rounded off value. All right? And again, if I'm doing a proportion, 90 over 360 part over the whole equals the partial area over the whole area. Okay? Partial angle over the whole angle equals partial area of the whole angle, uh, over the whole area and then cross multiply and solve, and you should get the same thing, okay? Got my squared over there, there we go. If I look at this one, it says uh, find the radius of the circle given an angle of uh, 60 degrees and a sector area of six pi. So this time we wanna work backwards, but again, I can kind of think of it the same way. So if I draw a quick sketch of this, Once again, it says we're at 60 degrees. So this is 60 degrees. And so I have the fraction that this represents. This represents a fractional whole thing. It's 60 over the 360, which is 1 sixth. So it's 1 sixth of the entire circle. And so what this is telling me is that 1 sixth of the entire circle is going to equal 6 pi. Okay? And so if I kind of think about that working backwards, let's set it up like an equation. So if I'm doing the fraction version of this, it's 1 sixth times the area of the whole circle is going to equal 6 pi, the area of the sector. Okay? And so thinking about it that way, I can now work backwards to solve this thing. So area equals, if I multiply each side by 6, I can find out that the area of the entire circle is going to be 36 pi. You can also think of it this way. If this is one-sixth of the whole thing is 6 pi, if I get six more pieces on here, and they're all 6 pi, well, then the area is going to be 36 pi. Okay? And so when I look at this, six pieces at 6 pi a piece, well, that's 36 pi. So that's the entire area, but it didn't ask for the area. It asked for the radius so once again, you kind of got to work backwards. You have to remember that the, the area is pi r squared. And so if pi r squared equals uh, 36 times pi, you could like officially solve this, divide each side by the pi to get rid of those, and then take the square root of each side. But you're going to find out that r equals 6. And it's one of those things where, yeah, you can just kind of get rid of the pi's. You, you understand the pi is there. It's talking about the square root. And this one, you probably didn't need to officially take the square root of each side. But... Keep in mind, it won't always be something that uh, d uh, uh, goes nicely into the square root. Uh, so you might have a decimal approximation for the radius. So again, just working backwards from that formula to solve for r. Okay? And so this one, it's 6. And uh, there were no units given here, so it's 6 of whatever the unit is that we were talking about. Okay? If you do it in terms of a uh, proportion, you can do it this way as well. You say, hey, this over the 360, so part over the whole equals, well, this time it's part, the partial area is the 6 pi, and the whole area is the thing you don't know, so you can call it x. And so as you cross multiply and solve, you're going to solve for the entire area, which is 36 pi, if you cross multiply and solve this, you still have to go through that process of saying, okay, that equals pi r squared, now let's work backwards and solve for r, okay? Uh, the segment of a circle is a region of a circle bound by uh, an arc and the segment joining its endpoints. So now instead of uh, the entire uh, pizza slice, we're only kind of talking about the crust of the pizza slice uh, when, when we kind of think about this. All right. And, you know, that's not an exact analogy. I get the crust would be curved. Okay. But in general, if we just kind of connect 
the endpoints of that arc that represent that piece of sector, that little sliver that we get on the outside, that's the area of the segment that we're talking about. So we're talking about that segment uh, that's in there, okay? And so here's what we want to do. We want to find the area of that segment this time. And really, this is basically our area addition postulate. When you kind of think about this thing as a whole, if I kind of stay up here with this example, the area of the sector would be this whole thing, right? So if you want the area of just that segment, well, what you have to do is you have to take away this triangle that exists right here, okay? And if you take away that triangle from the sector, from the area of the sector, what you're left is that little strip on the outside, that little curve uh, piece on the outside, all right? And so really that's what this comes down to is to find that area, we're just going to use some area addition or subtraction as it were to say, hey, I could find the area of the sector, I can find the area of the triangle, and if I take away the triangle from the sector, I'm left with that uh, segment of the circle with the area for that segment, okay? And so uh, taking a look at something like this guy, it says find the area of the segment of the circle. So if I want to find this area, once again, all I have to do is find the area of this entire sector. And if I find the area of that entire sector, I then just have to take away the triangle that I see. And so for this one, start with the area of the entire circle. The area of the entire circle is pi r squared, so 9 pi for this one. And notice I leave it in terms of pi until I get to the end, all right? And so this one, it's 9 pi for that guy. And if I want the area of just that sector, again, that's a 90 degree angle because of vertical angles. And so if that's 90 degrees, I only want a fraction of the whole area. And the fraction that I want is 1 fourth. Again, that's an easy one to simplify, so we might as well. So the area of the sector, I'll label it this way. The area of the sector is 1 fourth of the total area. And so I can find that. That's 9 fourths pi. And notice, once again, I leave it in terms of pi because I'm not done with this calculation. This is why it, it's helpful to be able to find the exact values, OK? And now I'm going to use that to find the area of this guy. I have to take away the area of, this, of the uh, triangle. And so for this one, if I want to find the area of the triangle, Well, the area of a triangle is just one half the base times the height. So one half, the base of that triangle is one of the, the radii at three feet. And the height of that triangle is also one of the radii at three feet. So one half the base times the height. Well, that's going to give me the area of the triangle to be uh, nine over two. And so now what I do is I take the area of the sector and I subtract the area of the triangle, okay? So the area of the segment this time, I'm kind of running out of space here. Uh, that's going to be the area of the uh, entire sector minus this guy, all right? And now it's maybe time to plug this into my calculator. Uh, minus 4.5. We can kind of do that part in our heads. So I get 2.57. Uh, Again, that's square feet. Okay. So it's kind of just using all these different things that we know and kind of bringing them together. Okay. I know how to find the area of a circle. That helped me find the area of a sector. I know how to find the area of a triangle. And that helped me, all those things together helped me find the area of the segment. Okay. Uh, likewise, when I look at this guy, and again, be careful, uh, in terms of the uh, segment we're talking about, the 30 degrees is not the one we're looking at. We're looking at this guy over here, the 120, or sorry, the 150. So we're looking at the 150 degrees in terms of the portion of the circle we're looking at. And so again, the, the portion we're looking at is 150 over the 360. And again, we can reduce that. That's 15 over 36. And it's always okay to reduce that ahead of time a little bit. Uh, you don't have to. You can plug it right into your calculator without reducing it. But again, I want a fraction of the entire circle. And so the entire circle this time, if I talk about the area of the whole circle, the radius this time is a 10, so pi r squared would be a 100 pi. And so the area of the sector this time 
is 15 36ths of the 100 pi. Okay? And so again, I'm just using the fraction. And again, you could use a proportion for this. I'm just doing the fractions now to, to kind of save myself a, a little bit of space and a little bit of work. And again, you can reduce these guys. Each of these is divisible by a 4, uh, which gives me a 9 and a 25. Uh, I can reduce the 15 and the 9 to a 5 and a 3. They're each divisible by 3. And uh, now I can multiply this out. And again, I'm leaving it in exact terms until I'm ready to plug this into the calculator. And that's why I'm doing this. So 75 thirds pi. Okay, so that's the area of the entire sector. Now I need to take away the area of that triangle. And so again, the area of the triangle is 1 half the base times the height. The base of the triangle this time is going to be a 10. It's one of the, the radii. But now the height of the triangle can be a little bit tricky. It's really this guy right here if I drop a perpendicular line. And as you're looking at that, you're probably thinking, well, I have no idea what that is. Here's where you have to use a special right triangle. Let me draw this, uh, this special right triangle off to the side. And I'm going to kind of blow it up a little bit. So taking this triangle, bringing it over here, here's the 30 degrees. Here's the 90 degrees, and there's one side of this triangle that I know, and it's not the base. Uh, students always think it's the base. They say, oh, the base is 10. Well, no, 10 is the whole way to the side. This entire piece right here would be 10, but I only want this piece from here to here. So once you partial, the, the piece that's 10 is this guy right here. When you look at that piece, the, uh, the hypotenuse of that right triangle that I have, that is a radius of the circle, okay? And now the fact that this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle, I can find this missing side is 5, and this one is 5 root 3. Well, the height of this thing, the thing that I was looking for, is the 5. So the height of that larger triangle, that obtuse triangle, is 5 units. And so here the area of the triangle this time is going to be a 25. And so now going backwards uh, to the area of the sector, I'm just going to do some subtraction here and say, hey, the area of the segment is just the area of the sector minus the area of that triangle. And now my calculator can, can come in here and finish this thing off. Okay? So 75 over 3 times pi. I don't know why I just did 75 over 3 on my calculator and then minus the 25. Okay? So 53.54. And that's square meters. Okay, So the area of a sector is a fraction of the entire area. A segment is just that little piece on the outside, so we always end up having to subtract that triangle to find that area. Okay.